Hello people of the internet, I am D.I. Gremlin and welcome, 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 welcome to week two of whatever the heck season this is of the PTL. I am D.I. Gremlin, proud coach of the South in Stoutlands and this week we are taking on Galadite and his Northside Neuverns. Now, hopefully, for a start, fingers crossed, uh, there will be more than three pixels on the screen this week. I don't know what happened, I just couldn't be bothered to re-record the video, to be honest. Um, but uh, yes, so hopefully the, the video is better quality, but other than that, we're playing Galadite this week. We are 1-0, and he is 0-1, and, and he has lots of Pokemans, but me and Galadite, we got a little bit of history. Um, I played him twice, one time I beat him pretty comfortably, and then we played again in playoffs, and he absolutely manhandled me. He took me by the bullsack and told me to beg for mercy, and that made me not like him. So... I'm here for revenge, uh, I really want to win this game, um, you know, getting off 2-0 and in this season, that would be good, but getting revenge on Galadite, mmm, that is what I need in my life. Um, so his team, uh, he brought nothing too crazy, but um, he had options of Azelf and Zapdos, and Zapdos I thought probably was going to come, but I could see him not bringing it. And the Azelf I thought was definitely going to come. I thought Azelf 6 owed me, and, you know, it was going to come down to Sucker Punch Mind Games once again. Um, so I didn't really expect Decidueye coming. And the Sil Valley, um, I personally didn't think it was that good, but I could also see why he might think that he really needs a Sil Valley Steel to do with my Lele. Um, so I am bringing uh, a really bulky Scrafty, a mixed Mega Absol, a Scarf Lele, Banded, Staraptor, um, a bulky offensive Gudra, and really bulky stealth rocking Nido Queen. Um, so looking at the lead, I was always going to lead Gudra in this matchup. It, um, you know, it leads well against literally everything and can hit off an attack against pretty much everything. I expect him to lead either the Cabalion or the Nido King. Um, if Azov was here, I, I might have expected that. Um, but yeah, against either of those things, Gudra is completely fine. So I lead off with my Gudra, he leads off with his Nido King. I can take any one hit and just fire off a massive Ice Beam on him, and that does so much damage, and all he gets off for it is rocks, and this is amazing. Because if you look at my team, Nido King pretty much just 6 0s me. Um, like, it's it's a really good wall break against me. I can revenge it pretty easily, um, and that's why getting this damage off on it is just so crucial and so good for me. Um, you know, this thing is pretty much not a threat, and he just kind of has to sack it off here. Um, I did think about making the prediction because Ice Beam really doesn't do anything to Sylveon. So I thought maybe he goes Sylveon here. But I looked at the Sludge Wave damage on this Nido King, And there was a chance that he could live the Sludge Wave. So I thought there is absolutely no reason to, to run that risk. Let me just go for another Ice Beam. And he surprises me and goes in a Gyarados. And I'm like, huh, I wonder why you would do that. That's pretty interesting. And I get the Freeze. I, uh, I freeze the Mega Gyarados, and uh, there's no toys about it. That is enormous. That is game changing. That is that is horrific, and I I cannot apologize enough for that freeze. Um, it is unfortunately the game we play. It sucks that it's on like literally the best mon on his team. Um, like if if Gyarados is able to set up against me, it's GG. It's over. So. You know, regardless of him being frozen or not, I have to stay in here and fire off a Thunderbolt and just make sure he can't get up two Dragon Dances. And because my Scarf Lele can deal with it with just one Dragon Dance. Um, but yeah, so I have to stay in here and fire off a T-Bolt. And if he wasn't frozen, he could basically just trade my Gudra for this Gyarados. And Gudra is really good against him, so that would be really bad. So yeah, that freeze is enormous. Um, I'm kind of hoping for him to thaw out here because I'm a nice person, but also I really want him to stay frozen, because I'm not a nice person. And fortunately enough for me, he does stay frozen twice. And you can see how good Gudra is against him. He doesn't really have that good of an option to go into. He has to go into this slow, most likely defensive Sylveon looking at his team. Um, it's like, This thing is like his only Absol response. Um, so he kind of needs the Sylveon, but he also kind of has to go into it, because Gudra is so good. Um, so, I look at all the damage, and I think about this, I, I really don't want my Nidoqueen taking damage, 
you know, his two big things that just beat me in this game. Gyarados, if that sets up, that can beat me. And Cobalion, if it sets up, can beat me. So I only really have to deal with Cobalion, thanks to my good fortune. And Nidoqueen is my Cobalion response. So if I switch in the Nidoqueen here, and he's like Specs and goes for a Psy Shock, I'm actually in a really bad position. So I th think to myself, I might as well scout the damage, see how much a Sludge Wave does. It could be a two shot depending on his set. Um, and he never one shots me. So let me just scout what's going on here. Go for a Sludge Wave, does about what I'd expect. And he crits me with a Hyper Voice. Which is hacks, but like it's nowhere near as bad as that freeze. Like that's it's not even a debate. Um, so this puts me in an interesting position. I can just sludge wave again and force him to do wish protect stuff and just kind of hope that I'm gonna get the poison eventually. I don't really like that um, because you know seeing that damage, I, I know he's defensive now. I can go into my Nidoqueen queen very safely and he, like he has to just go for a wish here basically. So I can just go into my Nidoqueen, my Elizabeth. Uh, but he actually switched out to the Silvalli Steel, um, probably not liking the prospect of me spamming Sludge Wave and getting a poison. He decides to play it safe. But that means that the Sylveon is kind of damaged, and I can get my rocks up for free here, because he has to go for a parting shot and save this Silvalli. Uh, and we do confirm that it is Steel type here. Um, but, I, like, he was bringing Silvalli, it had to be Steel. Um, so now I can just go into my Scrafty. My Scrafty was here for the Gyarados, and also to take a hit from a Nidoking, or something like that. Um, so, now that basically those two things are wrapped away, my Scrafty kind of has free reign to do what it wants. So, like, if he predicts that in Brave Birds, like, good on him. But, um, going Scrafty here, I am dodge a Poltergeist, that would have done, like, 10%. Um, but I guess that's, I mean, that didn't really matter. But I can just go for a very free knockoff. Um, and now he has to go for a wish on this Sylveon, so I can just go into my Elizabeth and fire off a big hit, a big, big hit. Obviously, he's going to protect there. You know, I was thinking to myself, maybe I try and go for an Earth Power to catch the switch on the Cabalion or the Silvalli, but he was just going to protect and stay in, so I thought, just just click Sludge Wave, it doesn't really make a difference. Like, on the off chance, he goes for like a Hyper Voice, and I go for Earth Power and he lives, that's really stupid. Um, but now I can just fire off Sludge Waves, um, It because um, he's no lefties, it will basically always two-shot this thing, um, which is extremely good news for me, and I crit him, and he barely lives, and he goes for the Yawn. Now that is an interesting series of events. So, the crit matters and the crit doesn't matter, um, because obviously that's always two-shotting him from that range, and he is... The next play he makes, he has the same decision regardless of the crit, but the crit puts him in range of rocks, which makes his next play harder. So he yawns me, which is terrible. Um, and I think to myself, like, just kill the Sylveon, just kill the Sylveon, don't worry about getting put to sleep. The Sylveon is the only thing that stops Absol. If you kill the Sylveon, Absol literally wins the game, and we can go home and have a pint. Um, but I'm like, but Cabalion can set up with a sword stance and just beat me. And my Nidoqueen is my only response to that. If my Nidoqueen is asleep, that's a very bad time. I don't want my queen sleeping on this, like, swords dancing Cabalion. So I decide that it's just safer for me to preserve my Nidoqueen. I I'm in control of this battle. I am in the driver's seat. There's no reason for me to take those kinds of unnecessary risks. Now, on his end, he has to kind of figure out if I'm going to switch or if I'm going to stay in. Because if I switch out, he can go for a Wish, he can go for a Hyper Voice for damage. Um, but if I stay in, he kind of has to protect. He has to protect the Sylveon, um, let me get put to sleep. And that's a really passive play, and he kind of doesn't want to do that. Most of all, I'm fearing a Wish, but I go into my Lele just because it covers all of the options, whether he wishes, protects, does anything. Lele is going to be good in any of those situations. So I can go into my Lele, and he, I believe, ends up going for the Hyper Voice, which I am totally fine with. Get 50% off on my Lele, I, I don't really give a shit. Because now I can go for a Psychic, and it just, I mean, he just has to sack this Sylveon off, basically. Um, you know, his Sylveon dies to rocks, his Nidoking has one rock switching left in it, his team is in a bad position, and most of my Mons are still kind of really, really healthy. Um, so he just goes for a Protect. I guess, scouting for 
something or stalling a turn of terrain maybe i'm not really sure um he goes into so valley steel um I, this thing doesn't get any fairy coverage or anything like that, so I can go Scrafty very free, and that does nothing. That does nothing. Now here, ah, uh, here I clicked the knockoff. I was like, yeah, knockoff is just free. It's just the best button. Let me go for knockoff. And then he was taking a while over his play, and I was like, well, you know what? What if he goes into the Cabalion, gets a justified boost, goes for like some sword stances? Maybe that's a way for me to lose the game. And I was like, well, maybe he predicts the knockoff and tries to stay in and get damage off. But likely he just sacks the Nido King. So I might as well go for a Drain Punch and try and get some recovery. So I was like, yeah, yeah, actually Drain Punch is probably my my better play here. And he goes into Decidueye and I'm like, god damn it, I could have gone for a knockoff and done like 90% of this thing. Um, so now I have to sack my Gudra. Um, which I'm okay with because it allows me to go into my Staraptor and literally just get a kill. Now, I am Bandit Stractor. I, I get a kill here, basically. And he should sack his Nidoking. King. I was like, okay, I go Strapti, sack his Nidoking, that's fine. And he took a long time over this play. And I was thinking to myself, I was thinking, if he's running some calcs and he thinks his Silvalli Steel can take two hits from this Staraptor, he is very mistaken. And if he goes into Silvalli here and takes a massive hit, the game is over. I've, I've won the game. So... We'll see if he sacks the Nidoking King or not, as I believe he should do. And he actually goes into Silver Alley, and I'm like, oh no, what is he doing? Because that does enormous damage, enormous damage. And I get rid of the Silver Alley for free. I mean, like, look at my Scarf Lele and look at his team. Look at my Absol and look at his team. This game is very over as long as I don't play like an idiot. So from here, I just have to be safe about it. He goes into Decidueye, he basically screams to me, hey, I'm Scarf Decidueye. And I'm like, okay. Um, in which case, my Straptor doesn't do anything in this game. Let me just sack it off. I can go into my Scarf Lele and just do very good things. Very good things against this team here. Um, and once again, I'm thinking, he should just sack the Nido King. And he doesn't. He doesn't sack that Nido King. Um... And I'm, I'm very confused by it. I'm like, why is he not just sacking Nidoking? What does he think he can do with that Nidoking? And I don't know. I'm thinking to myself, if it's not Scarf, it's like outsped and just killed by a load of stuff. But then, if it is Scarf, it's not strong enough against my more bulky mons. So, I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. But here he goes, Cabalion. And, I mean, I could switch, but... At this point in the game, Psychic does a million to this thing, and I just have to not get swept. So I'm like, you know what, let me just click Psychic, do all that damage. He's going to knock me out here, but I don't really care, because this means that I can't lose. And not losing is pretty cool. Um, so I can just go into my Nidoqueen, Queen, which is still at full health, which is unbelievable. You can see how little that Iron Head does. But obviously, if he got a Sword Stance up, like... All he needs is one Iron Head flinch, and I lose. That's how big of a threat that thing was. Or just a bit of chip damage on my on my queen. So he goes into his Nido King. This thing is very nearly dead. I could go into my Scrafty here, potentially take two hits, but Scrafty is like my safe, my safe boy. Um, and I just go into the Absol, and I go for the Sucker Punch just, just in case he was Choice Scarf, and that was why he was keeping it around. Um, either way, it didn't really matter. I, I could have just gone Scrafty there and... Guaranteed lived the hit and just knocked him out, but Absol is cool. Um, so yes, that is that is the end of the game. I've won another game of Pokemans. Um two O. Honestly, I could have won this game like like four O. Um, but I just decided that I was gonna play the game as safely as possible. Like I got that freeze on the Gyarados, that massive bit of luck, and I was like, if I don't take advantage of that freeze. I'm the dumbest person on the planet. Let me play as safe as possible. Make sure I win the game. Give him no chance of winning. And, you know, small differential, but... Hey, I'm 2-0. Last season I was 0-2. It was bad news bears. Had to, like, do really well. I, I can lose all the games in the world now. Well, not really. Um, But, yeah, I... I hate winning like that. And the thing is, that, that freeze was so early... That we have absolutely no idea how much that freeze mattered in the long term, but um, 
it, it, it had to be big. It had to be big. That Gyarados was such a big threat. And like I said, it just meant that I didn't need to take any risks throughout the whole game. I could just make my safe play and just know that I was going to have the tools to win this game. Like, my, I could have gone into Absol and just killed everything, but it was like, maybe his Cabalion has, like, the, the berry for me. Maybe his Cabalion's a bit bulky. You know, I don't know if he's got a Scarfer yet. So I just decided to play it safe. I was like, as long as I have my Absol alive, I win the game. And my Absol was alive and won the game at the end. So it's cool. I am good at the Pokemans. Uh, but yes, that is that is it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.